here at this conference what we are talking about is making policy related decisions which can manage carbon or uh, which can help, help us uh, with carbon sequestration. So when you have this policy implementation, it comes down to the grassroots levels where uh, mainly the farmers are the ones who are going to be involved with this uh, implementation of the carbon sequestration practices. And so farmers, small scale farmers and and industrial farmers as yes, well? Yes, any, any, well, uh, when we talk about carbon sequestration, you're talking about croplands, forest lands, uh, and some other uh, land use. Mm. Uh, so what this relates to is mainly the cropland where the farmers are involved and which is a significant portion of the, the overall uh, potential land that you can use for carbon sequestration. Uh, so actively the stakeholders that are in, in, invested into this. Uh, what we are trying to suggest here is you need to provide them some on-farm tools that can help them make some decisions about uh, their management practices. Uh, it is very well known, uh, very well established that the, some of the good practices can help you sequester carbon. But the, the good thing is uh, sequestering carbon also has some co-benefits. And when you look from a farmer's perspective, the co-benefits are the ones that are probably more convincing for the farmers uh, than just the, just the carbon sequestration itself. So what we have here is uh, the first question that comes uh, for farmers is assessment part. Uh, whenever you go to a farm, you, the farmer would want to know uh, what is my fertility level, what is the level of organic carbon I have and so on. So they, they look at the soil quality. Uh, and then uh, the one way, the traditional way of assessing the quality of the soil is you take a soil sample and send it to a lab. Uh, a lot of cases, if you're dealing with large areas, uh, it's, it becomes very expensive for the farmers to take these samples and send them to the lab and get them analyzed. Uh, so they look for some alternative solutions. Some farmers for experience, they can just go pick up some soil and then say, oh, this is good quality soil, soil and then go from there. But with, the, with more constraints on agriculture, what farmers want to do is make it more cost beneficial, so cost effective. And one way to do that is reduce the amount of inputs that you require. For example, if you just look at the soil, that's not going to tell you uh, how much nitrogen and phosphorus and potassium that soil has. So if you know how much you already have, then when you, in, when you apply fertilizers or any other inputs or manure, you would, you would be able to make a decision that, okay, my soil already has this much nutrition level, I don't need to apply so much fertilizer or uh, nutrients. I can apply only this much and that will save me the cost of, uh, cost of inputs. So that's why the assessment part is important. And we, uh, this is Dr. Rafiq Islam, uh, who I work for. And this is a field soil quality test kit that he uh, developed through the Ohio State University. And this kit is being uh, also commercialized through the university uh, and, uh, and a local company uh, so that it will have a broader outreach uh, and be available to more farmers. So it's a rapid test for soil quality and it is based on the active fraction of the the total organic matter or the total organic carbon. So when you look at the carbon in the soil, in general, you would have a passive fraction, which is a more of a, a, a slow fraction that is decomposing and then the active fraction, which is decomposing very fast. And uh, our studies show that the active carbon in the soil is a very good indicator of the overall soil quality from a farmer's perspective. And uh, that active fraction is the one that is available for the biological activities as well. So uh, we de he developed a test based on uh, uh, oxidation of that fraction. And uh, so on this graph here, you can see the active carbon measured using the same uh, chemical test in a lab. And then active carbon measured by the soil quality test kit on the Y. 
and you can see a R square of 0.98 which establishes the reliability of this field test kit in the field. <clears throat> now what we say is when you have the active carbon measurement in the field that can actually give some indication of overall soil quality at the same time it can also tell you how much uh, fertility and uh, uh, the overall physical structure of the soil so we make some estimations based on that so that is the first part the assessment the second part is prediction now once you established what is the carbon level what is the what quality soil i have a farmer would want to know in future if i do certain things uh, how is the soil quality going to look like in the next 5, 10, 15 or 50 years and that's when the prediction factor comes in and this is uh, where my work comes in and this is called uh, Ohio State University Soil Organic Matter Calculator so what we developed here is a spreadsheet based tool with the interface and that interface uh, acts as, a, as an expert to the farmers it just uh, takes them through step-by-step -step questions about how many years you want to predict and then what crop rotation you have for your crops what yields are you expecting are you using any tillage conventional tillage no tillage and so on uh, if you are adding any manure uh, to your system and then if you have your soil test report from last year or recently you can include that uh, initial organic matter content of your soil in there and once you get all these inputs from the farmers it's as if i'm asking them questions and once you get those uh, the, the the general inputs from the farmers then the calculator will take these inputs and make a prediction of organic matter in the future so uh, we have existing scientific models that do the same thing uh, based on very complicated process based simulation what we do is a very simplistic approach on an annual basis we try to make a prediction for the farmer based on their management practice and then they can go on and say okay my current practices or the practices that I was thinking about are not good enough uh, what if I change something and that's where the decision part comes in so they try to change some of the practices so if it's a conventional till farmer uh, uh, doing certain continuous crop they can say okay maybe what what will happen if I switch to no-till so they can see the effect of no-till by selecting the changing the terrace system uh, they say oh this is maybe not good enough so what if I add cover crops so they can make that change in the calculator and do the prediction now what we try to what we are suggesting here is when you have the soil uh, testing done it gives you the total organic matter but the soil testing lab will not tell you how much passive fraction you have and how much active fraction you have so that's where the soil quality test kit comes in so you can actually use the test kit in field uh, and quickly get an estimate of how much active carbon you have and enter that information because this calculator differentiates active carbon and passive carbon so this is this block diagram shows the integration of these two tools so active carbon test kit uh, in the field and then you can use your organic matter calculator when you combine these so what we are trying to do is we over last 10 years we developed two different uh, individual tools for farmers but uh, you cannot give separate tools to the farmers you need to integrate them so we are integrating these two tools into one system so that the farmers can use it for better decision making uh, if they have a good idea of their active carbon then uh, the reliability of calculator prediction itself will improve so that is the idea uh, for this framework that we are proposing and so where, where can we find this uh, here we we have a link here go.osu.edu slash som calculator and these four letters are capital so uh, and, and what are the conditions to use this calculator so this is available for free when you request for it you, you will get a file to download and you can just start using it the limitations uh, that we have is we developed this for the ohio and michigan so midwest area so if you're uh, trying to use this for a dry land agriculture you you probably need some uh, calibration of the 
of the calculator itself or validation of the calculator itself so that's why uh, uh, if you have if you are from this uh, uh, a region which is uh, which has similar climate and similar soils as the midwestern united states uh, we, you can you can reliably use this uh, we have tested the the uh, accuracy of the calculator based on some long term studies and uh, it has uh, actually come up with really good reliability for its uh, for the prediction so it's already validated for our region and soils uh, and then obviously if if people have questions they can contact me we we usually try to help them uh, help them figure out how to use it and how, how, who is using it at the moment so so far uh, since we released it we have we have had uh, more than 300 people who requested about 50 percent of the, the the users said that they were farmers and they wanted to use the calculator for their own farms mm. and among the other 50 percent majority maybe 30 to 40 percent are crop consultants uh, educators uh, who wanted to use the calculator for teaching someone the importance of uh, organic matter and carbon sequestration. And, and is it just in the US or around the world? And I, we have received requests from all over the world, not just the US. And how long did it take you to develop the calculator? Oh, this was, uh, this was supposed to be a one-year project. Uh, and this was uh, another interesting thing is this was actually funded by a, a farmer organization. So farmers are the ones who demanded for this tool. And that's Which organization? The, this was the Michigan Corn Growers Association. So this is a non-profit organization that uh, uh, all the corn, uh, corn uh, maize farmers in the United States, uh, in the Michigan, state of Michigan, they uh, contribute to the fund and they fund some research projects. So they, uh, they initially gave us some uh, funds and then the second phase of this project was funded by the Ohio Soybean Council. Mm. Uh, so they also uh, provided us funds to work on this. So uh, it took us about uh, one year to actually build the calculator, another year or so to refine it and validate it, and then we released it. So over a period of two years is what we developed this, and it's still work in progress. This is still a, a Excel spreadsheet-based program. In the next phase, what we want to do is make it available online, mm. so that uh, it's easier for the for the people to use. Mm. So. And and um, in terms of um, uh, increase, soil carbon increase, and uh, the different farming practices, uh, what are the best practices that you've seen through this calculator? Um, you know, give them give the most uh, sequestration when it comes to, to CO two and carbon. So. Um, you don't need the calculator for that. Mm. Our center, we I work with the Ohio State University uh, South Centers, which is a research uh, it's a research station under the university. We do regional it's a regional station, and we have long term studies uh, that were focused on the benefits of different agricultural practices. So some of the practices I can mention is number one uh, number one is crop rotation. So if you are doing a continuous monocropping, that's probably not a good idea. If you have crop rotation, uh, that creates a synergy uh, for uh, uh, for the soil biological activities, and that helps uh, make the active fraction more uh, active in a way. Uh, second aspect is the uh, if transitioning from conventional tillage to no tillage, or zero tillage or reduced tillage, whichever is feasible for that specific soil. So that is a good practice. Uh, it's being uh, it's being adopted in pretty much the whole world. Third aspect, we have done intensive uh, research on cover crops, and by cover crops, what I mean is the idea is that in the U.S. Uh, in northern United States, uh, you have very short growing season. Uh, it starts in the spring and ends in the October or fall, and the remaining period of the uh, the year there is no cover on the soil. So the idea is to grow some crops that can keep the soil covered. Uh, so we, when we preach this to the farmers, uh, we suggest that the soil should always be covered above ground as well as it should have uh, below ground mm. some kind of roots growing, live roots. Mm. So we, uh, the third practice which is very effective 
is the cover crops if you start growing cover crops you are basically bringing in more biomass input into the soil and that really helps uh, sequester carbon now uh, what happens is there is uh, some limitations with respect to the adoption of no-till and uh, uh, a lot of farmers notice that in the first two or three years or maybe up to five years when they transition into no-till their yields go down and they start having some issues with respect to soil crusting uh, stratification of nutrients and carbon in the top layers because you are maintaining the residue sometimes too much moisture uh, all these issues can be resolved if you start with cover crops and then transition into no-till so that's another uh, uh, conclusion that came out uh, from our our research center and dr rafiq islam he he has conducted trials on cover crop mixes and tried to standardize cover crop mixes for uh, different agricultural systems and soils uh, so now what we recommend is you just don't plant any cover crop just one cover crop you have to have a mix of cover crops and we usually recommend two to three types of cover crops that would really benefit the soil for example uh, if you have compaction issues you can grow radish that can go deep um, and break the com compaction uh, you, you also want to have some legume cover crops in the mix which can help you sequester uh, which, which can help you fix some nitrogen uh, in the soil but at the same time you also need some uh, uh, grass uh, species which can help you sequester carbon they have a lot of carbon uh, so and then they are they have a lot of biomass mm. so if you have a mix of cover crops mm. that's going to help you protect the soil from erosion at the same time uh, 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 get some nutrients uh, mm. uh, fix some nutrients from atmosphere and break the compaction mm. so it's multiple benefits of cover crops that go into this uh, and how about uh, uh, chemicals uh, the use of chemicals would you suggest a uh, low chemical or no chemical use at all so we have done um, research ranging from chemical based agriculture all the way up to organic agriculture we we had a long term project on organic farming uh, where we tried to uh, use these uh, combination of uh, practices like no tillage cover crops and then uh, uh, since in organic agriculture you cannot use anything uh, to take care of the weeds or the in the end you have to either kill the cover crop or roll it down into to mix with the soil so we have tried using vinegar as a alternative instead of a chemical so that relates to the non-chemical options uh, typically in no tillage systems uh, initially you might see an increase in the in the use of herbicides uh, and pesticides because of more moisture but if you our recommendation is you have to have a long term continuous no till plus cover crops what happens is uh, our we, we conducted research on uh, combining these and when we looked at the 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 pests insect pests and predator populations uh, we found that when you have the combination of cover crops and no-till over long term you're gonna see uh, a ecosystem developed where you have even if you have more insect pests you also have a large number of predators in those uh, in those fields so over long term it's the, the usage of chemicals is going to go down if you have a sustainable agricultural practice so when we do our research we compare systems we, in, we compare the integrated approach of management. Uh, we don't just compare individual treatments.